Here with us today to discuss one of the five main recommendations in the blueprint is Dr. Jatin Nathwani. And Professor Nathwani is the Ontario Research Chair in Public Policy and Sustainable Energy Management at the University of Waterloo and Executive Director of the Waterloo Institute for Sustainable Energy. He serves as our Principal Scientific Advisor and one of the authors of the Equinox Blueprint. Thank you, Julie. Uh, it's my uh, pleasure and a privilege uh, uh, to share with you some of the insights uh, uh, that have emerged uh, from our collective efforts here uh, under the Waterloo Global Science Initiative uh, at the Equinox Summit last year. Uh, our goal in simple terms is to help shape the agenda for the transition uh, of the global energy economy uh, to one with a lower carbon footprint. And to achieve this, uh, we focus on electrification of the energy system uh, as the vector to get us there. Uh, what we have uh, set about to do last June uh, at the summit was to, in essence, help reboot the global dialogue uh, on energy issues. Uh, we began by asking, what future do we want to have? What cutting edge science and technological developments are required or that exist today that hold promise? And can we imagine how we might be able to contribute to the f this future that we want to create? Uh, we kind of work backwards to create and explore what you might call innovative pathways and to imagine the transformative power of science. And then explore how to practically leverage the insights through uh, integration with policy, uh, business, and uh, social opportunities. At the heart of the summit, as Julie explained, were kind of three groups of people, the quorum or the scientific experts uh, with their vision of uh, future technologies, uh, the forum of our young uh, international leaders, uh, some of the most thoughtful and energetic individuals uh, I have worked with uh, in, uh, that I can recall. And there were, of course, many senior advisors who helped the participants work through policies and business implementation issues. Uh, representatives from 14 countries covered every hemisphere and continent, and we were able to capture uh, fresh perspectives uh, from a truly international and multi-generational group. Uh, emphasis here, of course, is on global thinking, the long view, and the need to engage our uh, young leaders and to create a pathway uh, for their future. The blue, this blueprint uh, recommendations, I view them essentially as a start. Uh, we, of course, invite uh, new communities to join this conversation, to make this document a living blueprint, uh, just as the participants of our summit uh, take the work out into the world uh, themselves. So our primary challenge can be described in simple terms as either too much of one thing and too little of another. Not enough energy to satisfy the coming boom in energy demand and too much of the climate changing greenhouse gases produced by the types of energy we already use, essentially coal, oil and gas. As emerging economies begin to ride the curve of wealth creation that is so dependent on growing energy demand, how can we at the same time reduce the use of energy from sources that make things worse? Over the last 20 years, the world came together in round after round of discussions and negotiations at the highest levels, talking of emission limits, targets, compromises, compensation, only to end, for the most part, in disagreement and, and often in acrimony. So witness the failure of Copenhagen and the inconclusive outcomes from Cancun to Durban. So we said, enough, and began by asking what can science and technology and innovations do to deliver meaningful change? Is the promise of innovation, I, I, I rhetorically pose, kind of the only joker left in the deck of cards, or is there a king somewhere in there? And so I hope to provide you with some fresh thinking and to help bring coherence to a complex problem. 
So we focused on, on generation, distribution, and storage, and the associated technologies. The societal needs are here framed as a multi-layered set of considerations. Knowing what we know, uh, global energy transitions are, in essence, an epochal uh, phenomenon with very long lead times, and it will take anywhere from 50 to 70 years. So the quick question before us is the role what science and technology can play to enable this energy transformation. Now here you see a classical matrix, kind of one way to map the landscape. We began our discussions with such a model of the electricity landscape based on generation, distribution, and storage for electricity to help guide the discussion and how new and emerging technologies can be integrated into this model. The discussion actually quickly evolved into a detailed exploration of the societal contexts and business goals into which such transformative technologies must be integrated. Shown here is the concept of a low carbon electricity ecosystem. Three of the pathways focus on the technologies for generation of constant reliable base load power, deployment, deployment of grid scale battery storage to support renewable energy expansion, development of enhanced geothermal power, and accelerated development of advanced nuclear power technologies. Smart urbanization and off-grid electricity access are the other pathways. We illustrate technologies that have the potential to bring about transformative change, but recognize that each Technology is situated in a wider technological landscape, part of an ecosystem linked to its constituent parts. We view these technologies as germinating seeds for pathways from which social momentum and refined plans can grow. Future success of any technology will, of course, always remain uncertain. But our thinking was to begin with an end in mind, identify those that hold promise, and not be constrained by the temptation to follow only where immediate and easiest short-term opportunities may lead. One of the pathways developed at the Equinox Summit for making renewable electricity production a large part of our electrical future focused on the development of uh, geothermal power. The heat at the center of our planet offers an almost inexhaustible supply of energy if only, and if we could, this could be tapped for large-scale electricity production in a manner that's cost-effective and environmentally sustainable. In the blueprint, we focus on the most important steps for developing the potential of enhanced geothermal system technologies. Demonstration projects that can improve our understanding of the challenges in drilling and extracting heat from those depths, and to prove to the business and policy communities that long-term potential of a clean and abundant uh, energy source. A few key points to highlight are this, that geothermal power is a clean, abundant resource for all practical purposes. The access can be considered universal. Geothermal energy is a large resource capable of providing a significant proportion of global energy demand. And with deep enough drilling, this is almost more than four to five kilometers, every country in the world could potentially have access to this uh, energy energy source. So you can think of geothermal as a proposition that turns the oil and gas drilling business on its head. If over a hundred plus years globally we have established essentially a very uh, sophisticated scientific and technical capacity uh, to dig deep holes in an industry that's actually capable of doing so profitably. Now instead of continued search for unconventional resources of oil and gas in remote locations in deep underground or beneath the sea, would it not be equally possible to mine for geothermal heat instead of carbon molecules? For example, the Australian Academy of Technological Sciences has identified geothermal energy as one of the most important energy resources likely to be of uh, strategic interest to Australia. Geothermal is, power is, is independent of weather uh, and can be used for base load of peaking power. Furthermore, enhanced, this is deep, geothermal power is ubiquitous, as I mentioned, uh, accessible to all nations 
and has the potential to deliver a low carbon uh, energy on a, on a very large scale. Next slide, please. The, the estimated enhanced geothermal resource base in the United States, for example, is some 13,000 times uh, the current annual consumption of primary energy in that country. Using reasonable assumptions uh, regarding how heat could be mined from uh, stimulated enhanced geothermal reservoirs, the extractable portion of still amounts to about 2,000 times the annual consumption. So the attractiveness of geothermal power is an inherent lack of constraints with respect to the fundamental availability of uh, the resource. The heat, and no one, and in, in this case, the, no one country has a monopoly of access. So this frees us from some of the challenge, challenges of geopolitics of energy. And the next slide is really something that's a little easier on your eye. It is a summary of the picture that you saw of the table before. Next slide, please. So enhanced geothermal system, this is the picture on the right-hand side, in simple terms involves enhancing the permeability of the Earth's crust by opening the pre-existing uh, fractures and or creating new fractures deep into the ground, typically more than uh, two kilometers uh, below the surface. One well is drilled and pressurized to enhance the permeability, while the second well is drilled in the far side of the fracture zone. Cold water is then pumped down one well and steam extracted from the other in a closed loop cycle. Yes, it requires some water, but it's a closed loop cycle, so it's not all that intensive in terms of water requirements. While conventional uh, geothermal power plants are limited to where uh, hydrogeothermal resources exist. Uh, and you may be familiar with countries such as Iceland, uh, California, uh, New Zealand, uh, Indonesia, and so on. EGS, the enhanced geothermal resource, is available over vast areas of the globe where all you need are hot rocks. Uh, to give you an example, developments currently underway uh, will enable Rwanda to produce anywhere from uh, up to about four, 700 megawatts of geothermal power. So employing technologies that are already used by drilling experts for oil, enhanced geothermal is a, an attractive option for baseload energy. Other uses of geothermal energy besides electricity pr production, of course, are uh, direct heating uses and geothermal heat pumps. And this, next slide, please. So what are the major issues and challenges. Uh, the barriers are essentially high uh, front-end capital costs of geothermal projects. Currently, lack of investor confidence and financing and perhaps the incentives or a price on carbon is another part of the equation. And until the technology is sufficiently de-risked, exploration of this resource uh, will be limited to isolated government-supported uh, development. And so what is really required here is engagement by major financial and energy players moving beyond pilot plant scale to a drilling program for more wells that will be needed to make the cost projections attractive to investors. Uh, next slide, please. EGS is promising because, as I mentioned earlier, there exists within the oil and gas sector a deep understanding of geology, and the capabilities of drilling technology. This has been acquired, again, over 100 plus years, and we all, all we now need to do is switch our minds to, to mines to mining for heat rather than carbon. And as with oil and gas drilling, scores of exploration wells need to be drilled to ascertain the size and profile of any geothermal resource beneath the ground. And the insight that can be drawn uh, from oil and gas well drilling uh, industry practices to lower development costs over time and increase the energy recovery. So the key technical issues to overcome include the ability to, to create a closed water circuit, avoidance of uh, mineralization and channeling that could lead to localized uh, cooling, and the integrity of the uh, rock fracturing. Next slide, please. A number of uh, uh, working geo projects, uh, working projects are actually advancing the technologies, but we believe that that the number of 
several large-scale demonstration projects would be required uh, to deliver the confidence, reduce the uncertainty, and to de-risk the technology developments. Real projects are underway in, uh, next slide please, uh, in France, the EU project called the EGS pilot plant at, at uh, Susu Forêt started in 1987 and has recently been commissioned. Uh, it's the first plant, scale is low, 1.5 megawatts, to utilize enhanced fractured permeability to extract steam at uh, 200 degrees centigrade. In Landau, Germany, we see a 2 to 3 megawatt uh, EGS plant that went into operation in late 2007. So these are, are technologies and options that have some credibility. But to advance uh, geopower on a terawatt scale, there is a need for a leadership role here uh, to be initiated, uh, perhaps in Canada, perhaps in one of the OECD countries, to work with a large consortium of industry partners uh, from several countries. Uh, this is the So in this slide, we've, in essence, summarized the pathways to innovation. And uh, you can uh, simply, uh, not to emphasize the points again, but that we will need the incentive structure, such as uh, tax exemption and, and uh, in incentives around accelerated uh, uh, depreciation on capital allowances, types of financial regimes already in play for the gra gas and oil industry. Uh, we will need a number of large-scale EGS projects, uh, so you can think of ITER as perhaps a global consortium uh, around fusion energy. This is the sort of scale we will need to put in place to advance this thing uh, substantially. My last slide then, uh, briefly, to make a couple of points, is that at this energy summit, what we have done is really taken a comprehensive view of the global challenge. Uh, and provided sufficient details along each of the pillars of these technologies to help shape a pathway for the future that would provide a basis for uh, essentially wealth creation, a uh, reasonable quality of life, and an energy future that is sustainable. And today my task was simply to highlight some aspects of the geopower, and I'm quite happy to take any questions that you may have. Thank you. <laughs>